Hi, this is Ama Duncan. Welcome, welcome to Mind Your Business. I am a corporate trainer, business coach, and founder of the Fabulous Woman Network. You see how some people really struggle to start their own business. They may have the idea, but they don't know how to go about it. For some people, they don't even know which idea to run with. Others feel stuck at a certain point in the beginning stages of their business. I help them to plan, execute, and achieve their business goals, depending on whichever goal it is that they have at the beginning. So I do this through business coaching and also through training. And on Tuesdays, I bring your way Mind Your Business. Now, Mind Your Business is a show in which I get to talk about business because I love talking about business. I feel like it's one of the best ways, let's just put it that way, to create wealth and impact people. So I like to talk about it. I like to learn more. And whatever it is that I know, I like to share with my audience just like you. And so today I am bringing you Mind Your Business like I always do, this time on YouTube only. So you're probably watching this on YouTube or perhaps I've shared the link somewhere else, but it will redirect you back to YouTube. And today's topic is how to identify your target market. Actually, for the past three, four weeks, I think this is the fourth week, yes, I have been doing a series on how to start your business because I have many, many of the people in my audience reaching out to me with this question about how do I start my business, Amma? Because obviously about six or so years ago, some people saw me quit my job to focus on my own business, so they thought I had all the answers. No, I didn't. I've had to do a lot of learning. I have to do a lot of experimenting. So the content that I share in this show or on the show, Mind Your Business, is really based on experience and the many, many learnings I've had from schools like Gimpa, um, Northwestern University. I've done courses, like numerous courses, and I still do them because I really, really believe that leaders read, readers lead. <laughs> is that the way to say it? And then also, in order to improve in everything that I do, I need to learn. And so this is why I am also very passionate about Mind Your Business. And so um, over the past few um, um, weeks, like I mentioned, we've done, I think three weeks ago, we did, so if you see me looking here, it's just my laptop. That's where my notes are. So three weeks ago, we did how to identify a business idea and then how to choose which business idea to start with. That was the week after. And then last week, I did how to test if your business idea is viable. All the videos are still available on uh, my YouTube channel, which is the Fabulous Woman Network. If you prefer to read as well, you can read it at amadankan.com forward slash blog. I have all that content there for you as well. So today's agenda, we are going to talk about your target market. The topic again is how to identify your target market. So we are going to start with what a target market is, why it is even important in the first place, how to define your niche. Now I'll explain how we started from target market and we are now at niche. And then finally, how to define your customer avatar. Ready to dig in? Ooh, I meant to ask you actually, how was your Easter? Now I know this is not live. You are probably watching it being premiered on YouTube or this aired maybe someday and then you are watching it a few days after. Still tell me, how was your Easter? Put it in the comments. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Okay, so we are going to dig in right away. Now, when we say your target market, really, how do we mean by that? Your target market. This is basically, hang on, hang on. I don't want to say anything that is way off. That is why I've prepared. I mean, it's not like it's scripted, but you get what I mean? I have notes. So basically, when we say a target market, it's a specific group of people who are willing to pay for a specific product or service because they either need, want it for themselves for, or for others. So let's do an example, for instance, of a target market. Let's say for people, women with natural hair, like mine, mine is natural hair, they may be interested and willing to pay for natural hair product. That is one target market, let's say for natural hair product. 
let's say also for friends and maybe spouses of women with natural hair these people will be interested in buying the items that's the natural hair product for them for the women with their natural hair so it's not just the people who have the natural hair who are interested in buying products and services for natural hair people who care about them let's say i have a friend with natural hair and it's her birthday or there's this new hot product that everybody's raving about i may decide to gift her with a pack of that or her spouse or whoever may decide to gift that person with the natural hair product so in this case yeah for instance if, if it's vows day and we are doing all these giftings such a person will be in your target market another example of target market is let's say i live abroad i'm a young Ghanaian woman i live abroad and my parents live in ghana i have the responsibility of um, making sure they have food stocked at home and you know stuff is going on in my parents home in ghana i may be interested in a, a product or a service that ensures that every month my parents have food at home so there's a grocery service for instance like some of you in kumasi know of mami kaya so that is so you can say that for people like mami kaya Ghanaians living abroad adult Ghanaians living abroad who have parents in ghana may be interested and willing to pay for such a product or service so that is what we mean by target market now the next question really is why is this even necessary why is this conversation necessary why is the target market important what it does is it helps you the person with your new business to understand what who they are and what they want so it helps you understand their needs and wants remember a couple of weeks ago i talked about identifying people's needs problems desires and all that to uh, design products and services to satisfy them. So in the same vein, you want to be able to understand the needs, wants, and desires of your target market. And you do this by asking questions, and you know, we're gonna go into all that, but basically, so first of all, it helps you understand their wants and needs, desires. So let's say that in the case of an adult Ghanaian living abroad, whose parents live in Ghana, once you understand their needs that perhaps one of their needs is to ensure that their parents fridges are stocked every month or week or whatever then you are able to design products and services to serve them secondly when you know your target market it helps you create products and services which will be of value to them because you understand their needs so you're not going to start now creating things that they don't need for instance if the items that they need to buy for these parents are items available locally then you're not now thinking of oh let me go to uk and then bring all these items the person is perhaps already in the uk and can't ship all these but this is not what they want they want local items so by understanding your target market then you are able to create specific products and services that is important to them like i also gave the um, example of the women with natural hair when you know and now these days we have a craze about natural hair right so when you know and understand maybe for some of these women their issue is breakage for me when i used to have my hair you know i, I had longer hair my issue was dandruffs for instance it was a, I, to be honest i think it's secretly one of the reasons i was so eager to cut my hair and so once you know these problems let's say i really didn't want to cut my hair but the dandruffs was a headache then you can give me a product or service that solves that dandruff problem you get me you get me so you want to create products and services which will be of value to them and then also you want to be able to speak their language when reaching out to them so there are different industries and there are always these industry terms that I'm, i know i'm the kind of person who is always teasing people Troy, I'm on the phone, please. <laughs> Let me finish, please. So I'm the kind of person who is always teasing people about using big words and all. I do that a lot. Yes. However, 
there's such a thing. I remember a friend telling me, Amma, it's industry words. And that's so true. You cannot be in a certain industry and then understand what it is that people are saying. And so, for instance, we in the we the startups of this age, we like to use words like ecosystem and all that. My husband and I are always laughing at these words, but those are industry terms. Whether we laugh at them or not, we need to understand them. So for instance, someone like me trying to be in that space where people are saying these words, if I want them to understand me, then I need to speak their language. But then if I move out of that space too, and I'm trying to speak to another group of perhaps women who may not understand these words like ecosystem and space and hub and all that, then I break it down into a language that they understand. So this is why it's important to understand for every product, it has its own target market and you need to be able to speak their language. So understand the target market. Then finally, having a clear target market helps you to have a clear focus and then it keeps you grounded. So you are focused on your customers. You are focused on, first of all, acquiring them, customer acquisition, that is getting the customers to come in through your marketing activities. And then customer satisfaction or what we like to say, customer service. Because you know that, hey, these are the people who are interested in buying my product and services. And so you want to make sure that all your, I mean, obviously <laughs> you are interested in them because they give you the money, right? And so you want to make sure that you are speaking to them. You want to make sure that when you are sitting down every single day planning, you are thinking about their needs. This Mind Your Business I am doing, which is targeted towards new women in business, I sit and I'm thinking, what are new women in business currently dealing with? What can I do to help them? And actually, all these topics, like I always say, people ask me stuff and I use it. Just yesterday, somebody made a suggestion to me of a topic I should speak on because she had realized that there was a problem in that area. You get what I mean? And so once people even know that this is the kind of problem you solve, then they speak to you about it. They help you with more information and then you become better. So this is why it's important to know your target market. And I want to just mention this quote by Meredith Hill. I've heard so many other people say it in different ways, but this one is by Meredith Hill. She says, when you speak to everyone, you speak to no one. That is so true. And it would take me six years of being in business to actually realize it. I used to think, oh, I serve all women. <laughs> the number of mistakes I've made seven, you know, trying to sell the wrong product to right women or right product to wrong women, you know, because I didn't really understand the concept of target market. I thought, oh, there are women they need it. No, it's not every woman. Now I understand that for majority of my products and services, I am not serving every woman. And for each of my products and services, I have different target markets for them. Okay, so we are going to go on. Now, um, this is also very important. So let me confess, I had actually planned to use slides, but I decided at the last minute that now nah, we ain't doing slides today. So I, I had all these pictures. I can't believe I spent the whole morning doing this presentation. And I'm not even showing it anyway. So um, we're going to go on to what I call customer avatar. I mean, not I call actually, I didn't invent that term. It's there, it's all over the place. Or some people say ideal customer. Your ideal customer is your target market represented by one person. So if you had to just, you know, call your target market by a name, if you had to describe that target market by one particular individual, that is the ideal customer avatar. Some people call it customer avatar. Some even say customer persona customer, ideal customer and all these things. It means the same thing. Basically, that person representing your target market. Remember we talked about your target market being a specific group of people who will be willing to pay for your product and services because they need it for themselves or for other people. Okay, so let me just give an example of, before I go into the whole concept of target market. So there's this lady in my network, she's called LP Nane Tiabwachi Tikatas. She's a business owner. 
she's the mother a wife she's the church um she's actually a pastor lp lady pastor she owns female no she founded sorry female entrepreneurs global that is similar to the fabulous woman network she does makeup she does um she sings she's a musician a gospel artist she does so many things you know and this woman let me tell you the funny thing about <laughs> using this woman as my customer avatar in 2018 she attended one of our events that was the first time i met her i wasn't really i didn't know her much even afterwards but we were in the same whatsapp group and we used to communicate and i remember um, i think later that year i was um doing an event a breakfast with the girls and usually i would make it you know organize these programs with a customer in mind an avatar in mind i i, I wasn't consciously thinking of an avatar but I remember as I was planning this event, I kept thinking I would, you know, make it, try to make a decision and I would think, hmm, what would, what would LP say? Would, would LP like this? Would, would, would she, when she comes, would she appreciate that it's this way and that way? I wasn't even conscious of it, but as I was planning that entire event, she was my avatar. She was the one I was thinking out, um, about as the point of contact for my target market because I used her to represent the kind of women I wanted to attend. You get it? So she was just one person and I just used her to, to make decisions. I, I, I thought about what she, what she would like. So she was sort of like a mastermind to me, helping me create an ideal pro program that would be of value to her. In the end, not only she, of course, she wasn't the only one who came. Similar women like her also did come. You get it. And so this is why I also feel passionate about teaching about customer avatar because I realize that it's actually quite important. I don't know about you, but it's quite possible that you also create products and services with people in mind, specific people in mind. And that's the power of the customer avatar. Now, how do we get to the customer avatar? First, you start by identifying your industry. So industry here, then under your industry, you have your niche and under your niche, you have the ideal customer. So I'm going to go and explain these to you. But first of all, you start to, to be able to identify your customer avatar or your ideal customer or your ideal customer avatar or whichever word you use. First, you identify your industry, your niche, and then your ideal customer. So I'm going to go, that, go into that. First of all, industry. Let me take a sip of water. So how do you identify your industry? This, I think, well, I am thinking that industry is the easiest to identify. So depending on what it is that you do, you know the industry you are in. So we have various industries, hospitality, education and training, health, and all these things. So the question you should really ask yourself is that product or service or business that you are into, which industry do you find yourself in? Now, I know that sometimes you may find yourself in multiple industry. Just try to squeeze yourself into one that fits best, really. But look, nobody is going to quiz you about that, that if you don't know it, I mean, unless if you are doing a pitch competition, but by then you would have refined it. This is not really something to have a headache about. So for instance, um, if you are in the Airbnb space, say you own a, um, a place that you're using for Airbnb, that's hospitality. Um, or maybe you are a tour operator. You have, um, you take people around like my friend, um, the party crew. Um, you are in the hospitality industry or tourism industry, whichever works. Let's say you have a crash you are in education and training. My company, I'm a Duncan consultant. We do consultancy, training consultancy, business coaching, business consultancy, and all these things. We are in the education and training industry. That's all we say. If you're a comedian, for instance, you are in the entertainment industry. The thing is about this industry is nobody is coming to suck you. <laughs> that your no parts go away. As long as you're pro providing a product or a service in it, hey, feel free to join. If you are in the beauty space, let's say you, you, are, you make cosmetics, and I love it when I see women making cosmetics. I think that's so awesome. I think secretly is one wish <laughs> I have, that someday I'll create my own cosmetics. 
but I digress. So for instance, if you're making beauty products like my friend Cedar Woman who makes these awesome, like people are always raving about her products and services. She makes hair stuff, facial stuff and all these things. You are in the fashion industry or beauty industry or whatever. So basically whatever it is that you're doing, there is the bigger, broader industry that people like you, people offering the same products and services as you are in that industry broadly. So for instance, if you are doing mobile money operation, you're in Ghana, you're into mobile money, that's banking and finance for you. You're in that industry. You don't have to be a banker first before you can say, I am in the banking and finance industry. As long as what you are doing relates to what it is that that um, industry does in the value chain. For instance, agriculture, you can be somebody who sells um, agricultural products or produce, or you can be someone who sells raw materials. You can be someone who teaches farmers or fishermen. You can be providing premix, you know, anything. As long as you are in the value chain, you are in the industry. So it's really that simple. So that's industry. Remember I said to identify your customer avatar first, you start by your industry and then niche. So I've talked about industry, niche next. So your niche is really your the specialized area in your industry in which you are an expert. The specialized area. Remember, industry is a broad field. So we talked about hospitality, education and training, entertainment. It's, it's so broad and it's a whole value chain that is in one industry. So you have to identify in this entire industry, what is my specialty? So for instance, if you're in the fashion industry because maybe you are a fashion designer or something, what is your specialty? Maybe your specialty, for instance, is bridal gowns, obviously for women. Or maybe yours is not for women, um, bridal gowns for women. You make what the, they call them flower girls. You provide clothing for flower girls. That is your niche. Or maybe you do the flowers thing. There's a name for it. Or maybe you do hassinators. Is that the name? Correct. So I'm supposed to be a woman, but sometimes it's hard to remember some of these accessories, perhaps because I'm not really interested in them. Or maybe you make accessories and it's a kind of accessories, maybe with African print or you make, you know, so there's always an, a niche. There's something, there's one thing or maybe a couple of things that you, you specialize in. Start from there. So here's the thing about niche. You may be so good in, and it's it's fine. You may be that good in many things, but when starting your business, start with one thing, the easiest, your low hanging fruit, and be known for that. With time, you can go on to other niches and people will know you for way more things than that one thing. It's fine. But when you are now entering the market, start with one, be known for one, and then expand as you go. This is my two cents. It may not work for you, but this is what I feel strongly and I've read about it several times. I've tried it myself, tried it with my coaching clients and it's worked. There are so many reasons why niching really makes life easy, not just for you, but for your clients and everything. Okay. Um, so an example of a niche, let's say you are in the catering industry, you make food and you sell but your specialty is soups and stews. It could even be just stews, or it could be just stew, um, soups, or it could be, let's say, pastries. And even, you know, pastries, they are different. Like I recently, one of my clients was into pastries and I was just blown away. There are so many different types of pastries here. Like me, a typical Ghanaian woman, all I know is my meat pie and my what? Even croissant or cry is not that easy for people like me, you know, but there's, there's so much more to it. So what is your thing? Don't, don't try to be known in the first instance that you pop. You want to be known for everything. Start with something, niche down on something. For instance, like I said, when the Fabulous Woman Network started, I was all over the place doing everything women because I thought, oh, I'm everything women. No, <laughs> I'm not at all. But it took me some time to actually realize it. So this is just to say, from my own experience, don't worry too much if you're having difficulty identifying your niche. You may want to try your hands on a few things and then find your sweet spots or your low hanging fruits. Sometimes that's the best way to go about it, you know? And I think for me personally, 
it started by that because I did so many different things before focusing now on new women in business new women in business so like for my group coaching for startups it's literally the startups um the the highest number of years anyone has been in my group coaching for startups who was already in business i think has been like three or so years and of course you know with startups <laughs> sometimes someone may have been in a business for 10 years but still they consider themselves startups for whatever reason and so yes i serve new women in business if you come to me and perhaps you've been in business 20 years and you are looking for some sort of strategy for your business i may not be the one for you i specialize in helping new women in business to start you know to plan execute and achieve their business goals so i will refer you to other coaches that i know are well versed in that because i know my niche i know what i have experience what i've been trained to do and i want to focus on that for now of course it doesn't mean that for the rest of my life i am only going to serve new women in business a time will come i may roll out another kind of program for people it might even end up not even being about women the fact that at this time i'm serving women i actually do serve corporate clients as well so that is another niche that i have but remember i've been doing this for over over six years seven years that's my training business yes i started my training business before the fabulous woman network so yeah seven years okay so you have to really decide what's your niche please what what is it that you want people to know you for i am speaking to you as someone who has recently started their own business or you are now starting this is the one it's for okay now i've talked about industry i've talked about niche now your customer avatar your customer avatar is a detailed description of your ideal customer. A detail. So like, remember when I was talking about LP Nanefia Buachitikata, I talked a bit about her. She's a real person. Now, if you don't know who your customer avatar is, like if it's not an actual human being, in my case, all my avatars are actually human beings. They are real people who, whom I've served before. But maybe for you, yours is a new business you are now thinking you know trying to come up with who your avatar is and you're now thinking through all these ideas it's fine there are still a few questions that you can ask yourself to help you identify your ideal customer avatar i'm just going to give examples here and please you can actually google customer avatar and there's so much information about it if you need further okay so um this is you uh, detailed description so for instance the gender or sex gender sex whichever is correct so um physical appearance can actually be a thing age of the person marital st status number of children even where they live what they do for a living educational level career hobbies hobbies is so important and then another very important thing hey this one is so important where they love to hang out because it is where they hang out that you can actually find them if you are looking for them to market to them right so where they hang out and then also what their biggest frustrations are what keeps them up at night what are they always thinking about what needs do they have that are unmet now what do they desire for some of my customer avatars um, or products the customer avatar is someone who has it or works very very hard and you know what she just wants some time off to go chill somewhere and this is the person i designed girls trip for <laughs> someone like me who just wants to go and chill you know nothing about learning and what what just go and chill blow some of the money that you've made and then you come back to ghana ready for round two right so i'll just give a few examples of my own customer avatars and like i said I have for each of the products that I have, I have a different customer avatar for it. Now I have learned so much. Before, I was just selling everything to everyone. I didn't discover Mer Meredith Hill <laughs> early. So I was just, I, I have made so many mistakes in my selling journey because I wasn't sure. I didn't know who my ideal customer was. I hope that after listening to this, even if what I'm saying is not so clear, just read more about it watch this video again if you need to and please if you know any startup who needs to really understand how this works please share this video with them okay by sharing you are not only helping them but also helping me 
um, project the work that I do, get more people to see it, and then get the opportunity to create more. So the more you share, the more you help me. If you've ever considered helping me, this is how you can do it. Mm. What is life? Okay, let's go on. So I'm going to share two of my um, product and the customer um, avatars. So group coaching for startups, which is one of my coaching products. I have two coaching products, one-on-one -on -one business coaching, obviously for one person at a time, and then group coaching for startups, which is coaching a coaching program to help women plan, execute, and achieve their business goals. And I do this um, for groups, usually between 10 and 15. The maximum I can go at a time is 15 because it's um, it's interactive. It's not like an online course that you go and take and then you you do self, you know, I have to be part of it, right? So for group coaching for startups, my customer avatar or ideal client is called Sheila, who is actually one of my previous clients. Sheila lives in the US. She's a wife and mother. She is um, she has a full-time job as a special needs educator. She's in her 50s. So obviously she's nearing pension in her full-time job. However, she desires to help others find their purpose. She's very passionate about helping, especially the youth, to identify their purpose. She's come into contact with so many people who are youthful and she sees them not really living purpose-driven life. They are just doing anything and everything, like whatever, you know, no direction in life pretty much like how my life used to be. <laughs> I should have discovered Sheila earlier, but thank God he brought me some other people, right? And so um, going on about Sheila, she also enjoys the word of God very much. She loves to read and she enjoys praying, bringing women together and then praying um, with them. Um, she, one of her biggest problems, something that really keeps her up at night is the fact that although she really desires to help people she desires to help people um, to find their purpose and all that. She's afraid. She's shy. She's afraid of putting herself out there. She's worried that she'll make mistakes. Does that sound familiar? So she has this kind of... So this is one of the things that is really holding her back. Another thing is that she's realized, especially thanks to Uncle Corona, that um, being online and projecting your work online is a great tool. However... This whole technology is sometimes quite daunting for her, right? So I've described to you Sheila. This is my customer avatar for Sheila, um, for group coaching for startups, which means that when I am designing product, I am thinking about all these things. For instance, she lives in the US. I live in Ghana. I live in Kumasi, Ghana. I'm not going to travel all the way to US for one person unless, I mean, the time will come and depend on the kind of clients I'm serving. But for this product, I can just do it online, which is what I'm doing right now. And the fact that I know that my customer avatar also has um, a full-time job means that she hasn't got all the time in the world to work on her business like I do. I work full-time for my business. And so I decide where I, and how I spend my time. But not like her so i've got to factor that in as well in designing a product for her um also the fact that um technology might be a challenge for her that also means that there's a way and there, there are certain terms i should use when trying to communicate with her i hope you get me i'm sharing mine so that it helps you identify yours please let me know in the comments wherever comments is is this helpful to you are you getting me should I use easier um, words the, the next time, you know, simpler English the next time? Just let me know. Give me some feedback, please. And I'm not doing this live as well. So it means that, yeah, you really need to give me feedback. So next time I'm recording, I will incorporate that feedback into the video, hopefully. Okay, so I've described group coaching for startups and the kind of clients I'm attracting. Remember, the ideal customer or the customer avatar is representing an, an entire target market. Now, it doesn't mean that every single one of my um, clients is living in the U.S., working as a special needs educator. No. What this does is just help me have somebody in mind. 
You see, here's the thing. You want the product and service that you're offering to be of such value to specific people. And then for the other people, they'll probably see it and no. A good product will have people who, are, who swear by it and then other people who are indifferent. That's how it's supposed to be because you are serving a particular group of people. You're not serving the entire world. Okay, so I'll go on to the second product I'll talk about is Women Leadership, Women Leaders Workshop, which is actually a recent um, event we had in Kumasi. My customer avatar is Millicent. Millicent lives in Accra. She's a contractor, very, very hardworking. She's a wife and mother. She's very assertive, extremely time conscious, like every single event we've ever had. If Millicent is the one is coming, she's usually the first to come. That is Millicent for you. She's not afraid to try new things. Look, her job as a constructor takes her to deep, deep bushes, the kind of places that people like me who are making themselves some fake lady lady will, will never go. But she will go. She's not afraid. She will do. She will go places that people are afraid to go. That's the kind of person she is. Millicent um, is never worried about what people say about her. She's herself. She's, she's very, very happy showing the real hair without thinking, oh, people are going to judge me. I'm in this space. I have to behave like this. She's super, super authentic. And I love that about her. Now, the thing about Millicent is she's always seeking opportunities for personal development. She knows who she is and where she's from. And she knows where she's going. And she knows that in order to get there, she needs to develop herself. She invests so much time, money, other resources in developing herself. This is my avatar for Women Leaders Workshop. So for instance, knowing the fact that Millicent lives in Accra, my avatar lives in Accra and I'm having this event in Kumasi, it works perfectly because this is the sort of person who loves to travel, who won't sit there and say, oh, when are you having it in Accra? I have clients all over Ghana who will travel to wherever it is that I'm having that event because they need to be there because it serves them. You get what I mean? Just like Millicent can be in, the last time we had an event, she said she was in Western region or some upper west or Western upper or something, you know, that new Ghanaian region. Yeah, she was somewhere there and then she realized this was happening. She just moved from there and to come, you, you get it. So she's very flexible like that. She's able to travel to wherever. This is the kind of avatar I'm having in mind when creating women leaders um, workshop. She's also someone who loves training opportunities. So whenever there's any event, I can easily invite her. I know that if she's available, she'll come. And no one only will she come. She will even drag other people along whom she knows. Um, they love to educate themselves and all that. You get what I mean? So when doing events, I'm thinking about these people. Look, there are books that I've read that will say, put the picture of your avatar on a wall or on a board, vision board, wherever, and then think about this person when you are creating that product or um, refining that product or something. And you know, there's something I haven't said yet. Speak to your avatar as well. You remember last week in the video, I talked about... Um, interviewing your ideal customers, you know, picking somebody and interviewing them. This is actually what you need to do. I remember when I started the group co coaching for um, startups, I actually interviewed the um, ideal customers that I had. I called, I did one-on-one -on -one interviews with them. When I was about to start Fab Hub Ashanti as well, I did these interviews because I really wanted to understand them. What, what are their needs? I didn't want to sit in my room and come up with a beautiful idea only to roll it out and people are like, no. There are so many reasons why it pays to speak to your ideal customer. Find them, not the entire idea. I mean, if you can find 100 million of them and do a survey, that's great. But if you can't and you can sample, even if you speak to 10 people, that is really good. There's so much you, I remember interviewing my um, target markets and thinking, oh my God, I didn't realize this about them. There were so many things coming up. You know, for instance, I have been a mother for almost 13 years now. Like there are things that sometimes I even forget are issues that mothers deal with, especially mothers with young children. 
or mothers with young children trying to run their own businesses where they have full-time jobs so it helps to really speak to these people i get to understand them i get to remember some of the issues myself delve deeper and then ask them hey what solution do you think that i can provide for you now here's the thing sometimes the solution they think they need might be different from the actual thing they need but how do you get to know that by asking them okay so i have hopefully explained to you using my own examples um who your customer avatar is how to identify them i talked about industry i talked about niche and i've ended with customer avatar now you have to do your work the work yourself ask yourself who is your customer avatar and then hopefully you can speak to them in your communication now i'm going to round up let me just say this keep your customer avatar in view when you are making decisions about a particular product or service so take that product and service put the picture of this customer avatar on your wall and make sure you are thinking about them it works like magic i used to do it even before i realized that there was such a thing as customer avatar i mean i didn't have their picture but I remember i told you about lp hanefi i used to think hmm would she come and appreciate this will this work for her way before we even became friends <laughs> So yeah, I'm going to recap shortly. I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been long. I see I'm still 42 minutes. Um, my goal is to do 45 minutes. Um, but I hope this, been, this has been of value to you. Please let me know in the comments. Give me some feedback. Or if you are shy of putting a comment out there, you can send me a message at hello at amadankan.com. That's an email. Hello at amadankan.com. Now, before I end, let me just let you know that group coaching for startups, which I spoke about, is um, being relaunched. I am recruiting um, a few more women to the current cohort that I'm about to start, cohort five. So I've already served about 40 or so women in the past group coaching for startups, and I'm recruiting the fifth cohort. And for six weeks, I'm going to help you along with the other wonderful women in the group to plan, execute and achieve your business goals. What is it that you want to achieve? Perhaps you don't know which business idea to run with. You don't know how to start your own business or you are stuck at a certain place in your business or you know what you want to do, but you don't have the motivation to go for it or you need accountability. Like you need someone you know, standing on your, your head and then knocking you and say, hey, go get it. I have a width, I have a belt that I use. No, I'm kidding. I don't abuse like that. But I promise that if you are committed, I will help you to plan, execute and achieve your business goals. If you feel this is something for you, you can call or WhatsApp us at plus two, three, three, two, four, six, two, five, two, three, three, zero. Plus two, three, three, two, four, six, two, five, two, three, three, zero. Or if you want, um, there's a link that I've added underneath, please click on it and then find out more about group coaching for startups. We start, God willing, 15th April for six weeks. We have a Thursday group and then we have a Saturday group. So depending on which one you choose. And it's of such great value, especially the community. I look forward to welcoming you if this is for you. So to recap today's Mind Your Business episode, before I go, we've talked about how to identify your target market. We talked first of all about what a target market is, why it is important, how to identify your niche, how to define your customer avatar. So that has been it. Has this been of value to you? Please let me know in the comments. And I look forward to God willing next week where I will talk about customer service tips for your new business. Until then, I wish you the very, very best of this week.